there are 167 community parks and larger parks uh, throughout the whole of the city. We're actually one of the greenest cities, the greenest city in the whole of the country with something like 4,000 hectares uh, managed by uh, the service. Uh, each of the uh, parks, whether the large parks or the smaller community parks, has a, an individual strategy uh, that's been developed over a number of years, consulted on with uh, local people to develop their individual piece of green space. I'm Richard Gill and I work for Leeds City Council Parks and Countryside. Uh, I coordinate the Leeds in Bloom campaign and I also help with the uh, 40 or so voluntary in Bloom groups we have across the city. I think it gives a, a, a message out to visitors and residents and of course the business community that we're proud of our city uh, and we like the environment that we live in and we're prepared to look after it and enhance it wherever we can. The project we're going to show you though is the community garden at the end which was separate to the, the, the main development and, and sort of followed on. Um, the school developed it as a millennium garden um, in 2000 obviously um, and it, had, it was overgrown, fallen into a certain amount of disrepair so it needed some money spending on it. Uh, the biggest cost was, was having this tarmac. Um, this corner was relayed as well and um, again it's sort of quite important for the community. Um, Sam was a child at Hillside Primary School who died um, tragically, I think it was in year four or five. Um, I believe um, it was uh, leukaemia, I'm not, not quite sure. And the children made the, the mosaic and, uh, uh, and laid it out. Again, over the years, the ground has sort of fallen away a bit, um, but we made sure it was, it was kept and relayed. Um, properly and we actually had some comments because it disappeared for a couple of weeks while they were relaying it and people came in and said what's happened to Sam's Corner? You are looking after it aren't you? So um, that, that, that's quite important. Well as you can probably see uh, around us it's a very built up area, very densely populated area so any bits of green space that can be um, opened up or preserved is, is really important just to break up the concrete and the asphalt. I, I come out here for uh, my lunch quite often and although we've got a building site over the road, it, compared with life in the office, it's peace and quiet. It's, it's, di I don't know, it's different noises. Um, we do get some bird song, we do get butterflies flying about, and it just uh, puts you in touch with the earth again, I think. So in terms of actually getting down and doing hands-on gardening, it hasn't been me, it's been the people through the church and the boys' brigade and through Beeston and Bloom that have actually been doing the maintenance and working in here. What I've found really pleasing actually is that even though I've not been able to be involved in it in the same way as in the past, is it's all carried on. Yeah. Yeah. People obviously want it enough to make yeah. it carry on and that's yeah. really nice. I know that from my own point of view that's one of the things that Beeston and Bloom's really encouraged me to keep trying to get people involved in doing yeah. it. They've given me a lot of support over the years. So this is Mr Potts, whose official title is? I'm the site um, superintendent. Oh, site oh, so superintendent. Caretaker and the old man. No. Yes, Hello, Mr Potts. Not going to hit me this time. And this is, not today. Not TV, yes. this is Joe Burt, <laughs> one of the Yorkshire and Bloom judges. And this is Andy Mumford, the other one. And this is okay. Richard Gill, who does uh, Leeds in Bloom. All right. Pleased to meet you. Excellent. Um, nice. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> this was a um, derelict garden. Um, a couple of years ago, it used to be the butterfly garden, as we called it. So this was all heavily shrubbed over, and had paths coming through it. Which we've taken, taken the shrubs out in the middle here, kept the hedge, and we're um, converting this. The first year of getting it to where we want it. Um, it was just um, a group of parents got together and they decided to grow some vegetables. And some parents have not really um, done any gardening ever. Um, well, um, um, it's it's very important because it's like parents sharing the skills with one another. Um, all the parents were asked to get something like the seeds and the potatoes, the onions, and they all like you know help because it's like um this is could be, this could be the beginning of like you know for them to do something like that at home, grow your own, and then you know get the kids involved and then do home home cooking and get healthy stuff from your garden but um you know it's just for them to learn some skills take it home and then share them with the kids this city was founded in 1997 when just three people got together to create some hanging baskets give them to the residents one particularly and 
colourless street. It's uh, Cross Flats Park. It's a, a, a very big park uh, in, in, a, in our small community, and uh, it's it's fantastic because every year everybody just come together um, and uh, have a joyful sunny day. It's absolutely vital. You must have you must have something green and growing and changing and seasonal to look at. I mean, what would life be if we lived in just among bricks and mortar all the time? To me, it's essential. We try to pull in the churches and the schools uh, and they'll help us and we'll help them. So it's, it's generally beneficial and it's, it's, it's good. We have over 70 friends groups involved in uh, in our parks and green spaces. A lot of those are very practical. They'll actually come in and do some maintenance work or some development work within the park or some educational work with local communities. We also work with uh, government agencies um, and also local uh, charity groups in Leeds, such as Groundwork Leeds, work quite closely with them. They're very strong in consultation with local people. You know, they can tell us what people are are thinking or are requiring their local area and we can take that forward and to improve their local green space based on that knowledge. People access the parks for many many different reasons, some people for uh, to walk their dog on a daily basis, some people for a, a stroll uh, around, the, uh, around the park, some people to come on a sunny day and uh, sit down, uh, enjoy the sunshine, some people to kick a ball around lots and lots of different reasons. I think over recent years we've seen a dramatic increase in the number of people using parks as we've seen uh, more flats being developed in the city centre and elsewhere and almost it's going back to a Victorian vision if you like of, of parks whereby parks and green spaces were, were, were facilitated for people who didn't have garden environments themselves pretty much like uh, what's happening uh, today and so we see a, a lot more people using our parks than ever before. You know, the service have said, why do you use your local park? People have said, well, it's because it's good for my health, I go there to exercise, and I go there to take my children to play. It's an important space for, for people to expand and, and, and get a healthier lifestyle. As money uh, gets ever tighter, people's uh, opportunities to do other things narrows bit by bit, and uh, people look to free opportunities, uh, and that's what parks are. They're completely free of charge. Mm -hmm.